Loch Etiv aboard the SAMS research vessel. This loch is one of the longest and deepest sea lochs on the Scottish west coast. And we're actually here today to witness something quite remarkable, which is one of the biggest migrations on the planet, which occurs not just in this very deep sea loch, but occurs in all of the oceans of the world. And this migration is a migration of tiny organisms, billions of tiny zooplankton creatures which live in the sea and which migrate up and down with the rising and setting of the sun. We're here in the middle of winter and it's cold and fairly dark. There's not much sunlight. It's a good time to see these migrations happening. So why do the zooplankton undergo these daily migrations, billions of them moving up and down in the water column? Well, the reason is actually quite simple. They move away from the sunlight because there are predators in the water. The zooplankton themselves are composed of sheep and tigers. There are zooplankton that are grazers. They feed on microscopic algae and plants. And there are other zooplankton which are like tigers and now feed on those grazers. Small fish will hunt the zooplankton and out at sea large whales will eat the zooplankton. They're the basis of the food chain and they're incredibly important. And they're all visual feeders. They need daylight to feed. And that's why as the sun comes up, the zooplankton migrate down into the ocean depths to get away from that predation. And our question was, well, what happens in environments where you have no day-night cycle? This may sound unusual to some, but if you go up into the Arctic, for six months or so, the sun sinks below the horizon. and There's no daylight, no solar daylight to speak of. And what happens to these migrations? Do they still exist? Are these prey still being hunted by predators? And our findings are that they are, but the story is actually quite different than what we expected. So here we are in the ship's lab. We've just been outside, brought the nets in, and now we are sorting out the zooplankton. So what was this finding that we discovered in the data collected in the Arctic about zooplankton migrations? Well, our approach was to, to gather data, to mine data from a large international group of scientists who have moorings up in the Arctic moorings on the seabed with acoustic instruments on them. And the acoustic instruments allow us to visualize zooplankton migrations. The data that we used uh, was massive, 20 years worth of data, cumulatively spanning 50 years. And when we mined this data, we found something which was hidden. And this was very exciting. There seemed to be a coincidence of migrations with moon phase. We discovered that the zooplankton respond to moonlight and this was something that nobody had really expected. So every time the moon comes above the horizon, zooplankton will migrate down to depth and then as the moon sinks back below the horizon they will come up again, a little bit like what we have here in Loch Etiv when the sun comes and goes down. But the lunar cycle, the lunar day cycle is different. It's 25 hours, it's not 24 hours. So this is a completely new finding and one that we hadn't expected. But what was even more exciting was that once the full moon had got high enough and bright enough in the sky, every month for about six days, there would be a massive migration of zooplankton down to about 50 meters. And we now 
think that the reason why this happens is because there's probably werewolves in these waters. There are predators that feed on the zooplankton like Thermisto and they will actually actively hunt the prey, these copepods, the grazers, down to depth. And we know that they can do this because we have measured their visual spectral sensitivity so we know that these animals can detect moonlight and moonlight provides enough light for these werewolves of the deep to actually be out there hunting and the consequences of this are manifold. We know that uh, zooplankton migrations move carbon from the surface waters into the deep so they're very important for global carbon cycling and we also know that zooplankton aggregations structure the patterns and migrations of other predators such as polar cod and whales. But perhaps most important is that we now have a completely different perception of the Arctic and the polar night. That there's a baseline, there's a different baseline. We'd expected there to be nothing happening at this time of year when it's incredibly cold and totally dark for months on end. And yet we now know that the moon drives these migrations probably because of predators, which is incredibly important about making predictions for the future where the Arctic is changing and where we have ice retreat. And effectively, we will have more light penetration into the oceans. So werewolf migrations may become more dominant in the future.